I want to start by telling you a little story because today, obviously, it's a little bit stressful. I was sure that nobody would be here. <laughs> always. I'm always sure that nobody's going to show up. Every time we march, I'm like, this isn't resonating with people. They won't be there. And then, of course, you know, we get thousands. So generally, we're, we're spot on. And as I stand up here today, I am really excited to see that you've all decided to come out on what's turning out to be a beautiful day. Um, but part of that stress today, uh, you know, I had an event this morning, and then my daughter had a violin concert, because even though I'm campaigning, I'm still parenting. So, uh, right before this event, I was at Edwards Church, listening to her perform, and I had a moment where I needed to use the bathroom, and of course I couldn't find it, and I'm running around, and I walk into this living room, and this boy is sitting there, and I've known him for years, and he looks at me, I ask him where the bathroom is, he's like, I don't know, I've been looking, I don't, can't find it. And he said, I heard you're running for something. <laughs> And I said, yes, I'm running for state representative. And he goes, oh, what is that? <laughs> so I said, well, you know what Congress is like? He's, he's a smart kid. And like, he's the you know, same age as my daughter, 11. And he's, I said, you know what Congress is? You know what the House of Representatives is? It's kind of like that, but on the state level. And he's like, OK, so how many people would you represent? And I said, about 45,000. And he looks at me and he goes, that's really cool. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Thanks, Max. Thank you. <laughs> but it was really um, kind of awesome, right? That all of a sudden there's an 11 year old sitting there going, oh, there's this thing called a state representative, and somebody I know is running for it. And now I sort of know what that person does. And um, even though Max is 11, I've had that conversation with a lot of people <laughs> who, uh, who don't know what a state representative is or does or how many people they represent or what the district is. Does everybody know what the district is? First Hampshire? West Hampton, South Hampton, North Hampton, Montgomery, and Hatfield. So, yeah. Um, so, I want to just start off today by telling you a little bit about myself. And I know that these wonderful people have done a tiny bit, but. Um, I grew up in Westfield. I organized my first protest march there, as was mentioned. I think the only protest march to date that's ever happened in Westfield. <laughs> we can change that. It can be changed. Um, I left at 17 to go to college. I went to Wellesley College. There are a few alums here today. Um, and then uh, after college, I. I was a languages major. I studied French and Italian, and after college I moved around a lot, as people often do. But I ended up coming back here right after my daughter was born. And this is the community that we chose. I had to move back to Massachusetts, and I thought there is no place in Massachusetts that I would want to live besides Northampton. And I chose Northampton because of the community here. Because when we have events, people like this show up. We are a town that shows up. And that's really exciting to me. And it's exciting because it means we have a lot of potential, right? It means that if we want to, when we talk about state politics, we can be influencers. We can be that driving force. All of these people in the room today, we can unite together to make some real change. And I see a lot of ways we can do that in this state. So after I moved back to Northampton, we started putting down roots, becoming part of this community. And we had something pretty life-changing happen to us. Um, my partner of a very long time got sick. He got cancer and eventually passed away. But um, my connection to, uh, to healthcare came from the day he got diagnosed. The, it was the day that it crystallized in my mind. We were at the hospital, we were at Coley Dickinson, and I apologize for all of you who have already heard this story. Um, and we were there for about four hours, and we finally got a diagnosis, which was not a positive one but not a prognosis, not a treatment plan, just like a this is what's happening kind of thing, like cancer but we're not really sure what. Um, and the oncologist said to us, your insurance doesn't cover this, so if you really, if you wanna go further, you should probably find another place to go. <laughs> so 
When I talk to you about supporting Medicare for All, I am not talking to you about supporting Medicare for All because it is a political buzzword and because I think it will win me votes. I am talking to you about Medicare for All because it is essential. Because there is no family, no family should ever go through that. No family should have to make that decision. Those are hard decisions. And a lot of my activism is rooted in the passions that I have. I am passionate about education reform because I have an 11 year old who is running around this room somewhere. <laughs> Not sure where. <laughs> oh, back there, back there at the kids table. Um, it, it's shocking to me that our schools are not funded the way they should be. That's not the state I want to live in, and I doubt that any of you want to live in a state where we are not providing the absolute best education we can give to our children. They are the future. They are the, uh, they are the reason that we are all here, right? The other thing that I am passionate about because it, it impacts our community is transportation. And we need, we talk about this east-west rail, we talk about it a lot, we talk about north-south rail, but we actually have to make that happen. And not 20 years from now, but, but now. And I, this morning I had an opportunity to sit down with Senator Lesser, who you may all know is one of the key proponents of that legislation. And we said, why is every representative in Western Mass not on board with this? Like, why haven't we formed a coalition where we are demanding that this happen? Like, that's what we need to do. We need to build strong coalitions. Because again, one person doesn't do this. We all do this. It's all of our voices. And it's been mentioned, I am a community organizer. Um, and one of the things that I do in that is I work to pass legislation. We advocate, we go to Boston, we bring people to Boston to testify, to, to lobby. Best thing to do, show up like around 4.30 because your representative is probably having dinner or like a snack in their office and go in then because they aren't expecting constituents to show up. And then you really get to talk to them. And this is what I've been doing. I've been putting people in cars and in buses and telling them our federal government right now may be a disaster, but on the state level, we can make change. We can make real change and we should be demanding that change because we cannot rest on the fact that we are blue and progressive and we think that we've you know, passed some reform in the past. We need to keep moving forward. We need to demand better. If we are progressive, let's fulfill that. So, I want to tell you one more story and then I want to open it up for questions too. But um, I want to tell you about the access hearings. Now, I forget who mentioned it, but access was a bill that we actually passed successfully as a coalition this year. It's a healthcare related bill and it provides no cost contraceptive coverage. And there were a lot of groups working on this, and there was a large hearing. And I brought a group of people from Northampton down to Boston. And there was one woman, she, she's come with us before to Lobby Days. She's very quiet, she's lovely. And she said, she had a really powerful story about how contraceptive coverage basically saved her life. Because what they don't tell you is that you know, contraception is used for a lot of things. And sometimes it, those things are just truly life-saving. And I don't want to go into all the details of her story, but we got there. She said, I'm not going to testify. I can't testify. It's too scary. All of these things. She sat through four hours of hearings. And finally she said, I'm going up. And she did. Like, she got up there and she was shaky and it was scary and she got back and she was like, oh my God, did it make any sense? <laughs> but she did it. And that was somebody from here. That was us going to Boston and making them listen. Because we don't always get listened to. We know that, right? We know. We're 11% of the population. We get ignored a lot. But we don't have to. We can be loud. We can show up. And... I know Susan said, one of the things that I think we need, we need district offices. We need a place where you can come in and talk to your representative on a regular basis. You need somebody who's going to show up in your community, and if you know me, you know I show up. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this 
this is about team building, this is about creating a movement, this is about demanding better, and this is about real change. I have worked to pass legislation from the outside, now I want to work to pass that same legislation on the inside, but I want to do it with all of you. I want to do it as a community, and I want to make sure that your voices are the voices that are heard on Beacon Hill. Woo, thank you. Okay, so I, I have some, we had some people submit questions, so I'm going to read them to you and then I'm going to answer them. And it says, if you win, what difference would you like to have made in our district after two years? We need the rail. Yes. Like, we really need the rail. And one of the reasons, I, and I should have said this before, but I'll say it now. One of the reasons is, and we are losing our young people. We, there is serious brain drain happening, and I don't know how many of you have children who are going off to college, I'm looking around the room and I know some of you, but they don't often come back. And part of the reason they don't come back is because we aren't creating the jobs that would bring them here. People move to Northampton, like myself, um, when they can bring their job with them, when they are entrepreneurs and they're able to create something for themselves. But we need to have jobs here. We need to have real economic stimulation uh, yeah, economic stimulation here, economic development. And that's going to happen if our state is connected in real ways. So in two years, we need to be building a railroad. <laughs> um, what can a state representative do about Trump? <sighs> if only there were more. <laughs> You know, we, a state representative can't really do anything about Trump, per se. But what we can do is to, is to implement the best policies possible within the state to protect the Commonwealth from what's happening federally. Um, one of the things, just as an example, that I've been working on, and we still have yet to pass it, but we're going to get there, is the Safe Communities Act. So... part of a coalition that has 189 advocacy groups across the state. We've actually formed a Western Mass coalition and we show up, like we go to all those hearings in Boston and all the organizational meetings. When we pass that type of legislation that says we don't accept a Muslim registry, we're protecting ourselves. We're protecting our state, we're protecting the people who live in our state. There are other ways that we can do that. We can require better um, emission standards in the state of Massachusetts. We can require 100% renewable and green energy. We can make those demands. Even if they're not gonna come from the federal level right now, you know, a really popular political stump speech is Massachusetts leads the way. And I get really angry every time I hear it because it's like, no, we're not leading the way. We could be leading the way, but we're not right now. So we can start to actually lead the way. We can start to be the state that passes these laws. And then eventually, you know, Trump will go back to Florida or wherever he goes and we'll have real government again on the federal level and then they can follow us. But for right now, the best thing we can do is pass sensible progressive legislation in Massachusetts. What are you most nervous about in your campaign? Uh, well, I was, like I said, I was nervous that nobody was gonna show up today. Um, I'm not nervous. Campaigning is fun. Like, this is great. Um, all I get to do is go out and talk to people, which I really like to do. I get to hear about what people care about. Um, and, you know, if I'm elected, I get to affect real change in this state. There's nothing really to be nervous about. Um, I was nervous I wasn't going to make my daughter's violin concert. There was that. Parking was hard. But, um, but in general, this is a positive, wonderful experience. And I think that if you are not having fun while you are campaigning, you probably shouldn't be campaigning. <laughs> so. Okay, and so my campaign manager is telling me to say, 
If you have any questions, ask away. <laughs> yes. Um, what do you stand on the idea of the fair share tax? The fair share tax? Yes. So the fair share tax is essential. We need to pass the fair share amendment. The fair share amendment would um, it tax, it's, it's also called the millionaire's tax. It would um, generate revenue for the state. Our state is extremely revenue poor. I think it is a huge mistake though to think that the fair share amendment would actually remedy all of the state's financial woes. We really, I think first of all, just passing Medicare for all would be huge because it would be enormous savings for the state. Um, and we need, to, we need to figure out ways to generate revenue. In, in all sincerity, but I am very supportive of that. Yes? What makes you different from other people running for this same position? What makes me different from other people running for the same position? Well, here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can we do a pass around? I mean, if you'd like to, they, were, they talked about the testimonials. Um, I think that the primary difference is that I do have the experience of working to pass legislation from the outside. So I know the tricks to get legislators to listen to you. And the people at the State House don't always like those tricks, but that's okay. We need to use them. And I'm consistently inspired. There are some good people at the State House right now. And I'm consistently inspired by them because they're the ones who are willing to sit down with the activist community and say, hey, this is how you get this done. The, this rep, this rep is maybe ready to flip, so go, go talk to that person. That's the type of experience that I'm gonna bring into this process. I'm not just gonna go and be another status quo politician. If that's what you want, you should not vote for me. I am gonna be different. I'm gonna be passionate, and I'm gonna be driven, and I'm going to not, I'm not just gonna be in Boston. I'm gonna be here too. I'm going to be at all of your meetings. <laughs> I'm going to be the real voice of the people and I'm going to make sure that my office is connected with the community because this is about building a movement. And I'm going to make sure that we work in real statewide coalitions, that representatives really come together and I really believe that the Western Massachusetts Coalition does that. We keep talking about how there's a power vacuum right now, but I, don't, I think this is an opportunity. I think we have an opportunity to elect some real new and different people. And I bring that to the table, and I am the only candidate who does. Yeah. The Parkland students were mentioned earlier. Yes. We see more younger people getting involved, Thank especially God. as things are happening in the future that are going to impact them. So can you talk a little bit about how you'll reach out to young people and ways that you think that we can get young people inspired to get out to vote, to register to vote, and to get more actively engaged in politics? Right. Well, I, I do think that we're starting to see that, and I'm really excited. I was involved at the most basic level because I do not want to take anything away from the students, but I was involved in some of the organizing around the March for Our Lives. And I think what, what you need to do is make sure that students are given power. Because a lot of times, and this happened at the first organizing meeting, right? We, uh, we said let's, that someone wanted to organize a march, everybody showed up, we made sure the students were invited, and for the first 45 minutes, only adults spoke. That's not great student organizing. So at one point I said, okay, so let's try this. No adults are gonna speak. Like nobody over the age of 18 is allowed to speak. And we're gonna see what happens. And what happened, you saw what happened. Like this amazing march was born in Northampton and that was just with a little bit of adult support and those kids took over. So if we tell them you actually have the power to do this, we give them, I mean, I gave them a list of media contacts and we gave them a sample press release and the next thing you know, they were, the ball had been rolling. And that's, we need to do that more consistently. We need to tell them, you actually have the power. We, we can be inspired by you. We don't need to tell you what to do. I think that makes a difference. And it makes a difference, you know, we talk about um, inspiring the youth. It makes a difference for everybody. Everybody needs to feel like they have power, that they have that ability to make change. And if we're gonna bring diverse groups together, which is constantly the goal, right? then we need to make sure that we're actually listening and not talking over. Well, if nobody else has another question. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. 
Hi, Lindsay. Hi. Um, I wonder who your heroes are that are existing in the legislature and why? Um, well, right off the top of my head is Senator Jamie Eldridge. Um, Senator Jamie Eldridge has filed some amazing legislation, including the Medicare for All bill, and he was one of the sponsors of the Safe Community Act, along with Juan Matias. Um, I think people like that, who come from an activist background, we've seen that they file the legislation that their constituents actually want. So people who are willing to take those risks, and sometimes, you know, those bills, they don't always get passed in one session, but they're willing to use their um, political cachet to actually do what people want. They're not just going to pass legislation that like oh, moves the dial a tiny bit and doesn't cost anything and is not very ambitious. People who are willing to be bold, those are my heroes. And Senator Aldridge is definitely one. change anyone's political party but I will say you know some of the towns in our district are pretty red and we went out and we signature gathered in all of those towns and we had conversations with people and it was very early they didn't know who I was I you know I told them some of my key points and when I talk to people about health care and I say we need health care reform because the current system costs way too much and we're not getting quality care and there's no real access, that reads right across every single political party. How we get there might be different, how a Republican believes we get there might be different, but they understand there's a problem. And with education funding reform, that cuts right across party lines. But to get the real, you know, the real actually working, if we could get Westfield on board with that. Yeah, that really These are the com this is the type of conversation that we need to be having consistently, and that's why when I say we need to build a real Western Mass coalition, it's having conversations with those representatives as well, because the issues we care about are not silo issues. We need to be open to hearing all viewpoints and figuring out a solution together. And we, do, I mean, especially on the state level too, the, the number of Republicans in office is very small. There's a lot of diversity of opinion within the Democratic Party. So my idea is that we maybe start there and then see where we can go. <laughs> yes. I just want to ask, um, sure. what is the deadline to register? I know young people can register if they'll be 18 by September 4th, but I don't know what the deadline is to register. Like 20, it's, it's 20, 20 days prior to the election, but I don't have that date off the top of my head, so what does that make it? The 16th? August 16th. August 16th, thank you. August 16th. We have voter registration forms too, so feel free to grab some if you know anybody who needs to register. I have another question. Yeah. Sorry. I was somebody that can reach out to like spend college before those kids leave for the summer? and get them all registered so that they can somehow because, They've know, been, they have been doing voter registration drives. Okay, they yeah. have been, yeah. And that's what I'm saying about making sure that those students are empowered. The students have been doing this. The high school students in Northampton have done an amazing job registering people to vote. So, we don't need to go do that. They are on it. Yeah. Yes. So you're on the ballot. I'm on the ballot. So what do you need from us now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can you can donate. That's always appreciated. You can volunteer. We're gonna be phone banking. We're gonna be door knocking. Um, we are going to be doing standouts. Jennifer said it really well. Talk to people. Tell people who we are. This is a team. This is not just me. This is a team that moves this together. That moves us forward. That moves House this movement party. forward. House parties are great too. Any, anybody you know who might be interested in hearing more about this campaign, I would like to meet them. 
So keep telling us, keep talking to us. There's a lot of people, we have Team Sabadosa shirts on, so if you see somebody with that on, that's a person to talk to. We have someone dancing around in it over there. Uh, if you're, yard signs, you can sign up at the door if you wanna do yard signs. Um, there are just, there are many, many ways. Uh, Megan is in the crowd somewhere. I don't see her, she's in the back waving. Megan is my volunteer coordinator, so she's the one who sends you all emails. And we're appreciative of everything you do. Susan. Can you sign up on your website? You can sign up on the website. See, they're feeding me information with these questions. Um, I do want to make sure that you eat and that you drink and that you have fun and that I get to talk to you all individually. So if I haven't yet, make sure you come up to me and I will look for the people I haven't chatted with um, and that we keep this conversation going. So I want to thank you all for coming out today, though. It's really really heartwarming and wonderful, so thank you. Yeah.